Given that this little PC is putting out this kind of performance with Cyberpunk 2077, I can definitely overlook the RGB. Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a powerful mini gaming PC that I've been trying to get my hands on for a little while now. This is the Eustar God 77, and before we get started, I do want to mention that there are a couple different variants of this floating around. What I have here is the version powered by the Ryzen 7 7840HS. So we've got those Zen 4 CPU cores and RDNA 3 graphics, but when ordering something like this, just keep an eye out because there is one floating around with the Ryzen 7 7735, which has RDNA 2 graphics. I've got quite a bit to go over and test in this video, but before we get started, I do want to mention that this video is brought to you by URCD Keys. I've actually been using this site for a couple years now. They do offer Steam Keys, Origin, Uplay. They even offer Microsoft applications like Office, but the main reason that I use URCD Keys is for their Windows Keys. Right now, their Windows 10 Pro OEM key is $19.84, but if you use code ETA at checkout, you can get 25% off. And another great thing about buying from here is they do accept PayPal. I just did this build here. I need to activate Windows. I'm going to head over to my updates and security. We're going to go to activation. As you can see, I've got Windows 10 Pro, but it's not activated. So I'm going to change product key. I'm going to paste it in here. Choose next. Choose activate. And Windows is now activated. We're ready to go. My warning is totally gone, and basically that's it. They'll email your code once your payment is processed, and that's basically it. If you're interested in picking up cheap Windows 10 keys for your new PC builds, I'll leave a link in the description. A lot of companies do market these mini PCs as mini gaming PCs, and some of them just don't live up to the hype. But since we've got those RDNA 3 graphics here and a really killer cooling system, I would definitely consider this a micro gaming PC. Inside of the box, along with the God 77 Mini PC, we do get a cable so we can install a 2.5 inch drive. We've got a 100 watt power supply, and this is a USB Type-C power supply. I was kind of hoping that we did have a barrel jack here, but through my testing so far, hadn't had any issues. Plus, we get a stand, so we can actually set this up vertically. And since this is a gaming PC, they definitely had to throw some RGB on it. Once you boot the unit up, you're going to get something that looks like this, but we do have a mode switch button right on the front. Now, unfortunately, I haven't found any way to control this from software, but we do have a bunch of modes that we can cycle through. You can also turn it completely off if you don't want any RGB. And uh, I like the stand. I love the way these look in the vertical orientation, but you could always set this horizontally right on the desk if you want to. When it comes to I.O., up front here we've got a 3.5mm audio jack, two full-size USB 3.2 ports, and USB Type-C, plus we've got that dedicated RGB button and our power button up here. Moving around back, we've got our USB Type-C power input. This does come with that 100 watt power supply. A 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port, and I believe the other one is just gig Ethernet. I've been using the 2.5, it's worked out really well. Full-size HDMI, full-size display port, and two more full-size USB ports, but it looks like both of these are only 2.0 protocol. And of course, when it comes to the overall specs, for the APU, we've got the Ryzen 7 7840HS. Keep in mind, when looking online for these, there is a version with the 7735 that'll have the RDNA 2 graphics. It's not going to be near as powerful as this one. We've got 8 Zen 4 cores, 16 threads, base clock of 3.8 GHz, and a boost up to 5.1. Built-in Radeon 780M graphics based on RDNA 3 with 12 compute units, and this will run it up to 2700 MHz. This will support up to 64 GB of LP DDR5 running in dual channel. It utilizes SODIMM RAM up to 5600 MHz. Inside, we can add one M.2 NVMe Gen 4, and we can also add a 2.5-inch drive with the included adapter. We've also got Wi-Fi 6. Bluetooth 5.2, and I'm going to be running Windows 11 Pro on this unit. But before we move into the testing, I did want to do a quick teardown and give you a look here. This was one of the most interesting CPU coolers that I've seen in a mini PC so far. It's actually pretty large, but it's coming in a bit thin. I'm not exactly sure how well this is going to cool that 7840HS, but it's got a much larger fan than we see on these mini PCs. Most of them have blower fans. This is around an 80 millimeter fan blowing directly down on that cooler so hopefully it does a pretty good job. Pulling the bottom off, this is where we can access our RAM and storage. You can easily upgrade all of that if you want to. We can also add a 2.5 inch drive in the bottom half of the shell here, and to my surprise, this is actually using Crucial RAM. 
The SSD in here is from Western Digital. I've got a one terabyte drive. But yeah, that RAM is running at 5600 megahertz and we've got 32 gigs right out of the box. So far, so good. I've got a bunch of games installed that we're gonna be testing now. And I gotta say the cooler they added here works way better than I thought it would. Now looking at it, it does look like a pretty large cooler, but it's a bit thin. I think, uh, you know, having that larger fan, just to disperse that heat evenly really helps out. As you can see, we've got that Ryzen 7 7840HS, 32 gigs of 5600, and of course the Radeon 780M, and I've dedicated 8 gigs of VRAM here. Uh, it'll automatically do it if you want, but you know, I've got 32 gigs installed, so I figured we could just go ahead and dedicate some. Now, uh, first thing I wanted to show off was what kind of TDP this is running at. I haven't done any kind of tweaking or tuning from the BIOS. I've got a third-party app installed that will allow me to go up, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and test this at the stock TDP. We've got core temp power right here. This is gonna be our total APU power. Run a stress test, and you'll see it does jump up to 65. So I've noticed that every once in a while we can get a boost up to around 68. And if you take a look at the temp right here, I know it might be a bit hard to see. It does slowly climb up, but usually with these really small PCs and running at 65 watts, it jumps up really quickly. If we leave it here for a second, it's just going to climb. And I'm sure we could probably hit thermal throttle. But right now, this is more of an extreme test. We've got all eight cores and 16 threads maxed out here at 65 watts. And I'm really excited to show you what this mini PC can do. Now, recently, we've had a lot of updates to these games and the AMD drivers. I'm seeing some absolutely amazing performance with these AAA games, and the first one on the list is Spider-Man Miles Morales. For the longest time on these RDNA 3i GPUs, we've really struggled with this game at 1080p. And of course, with this, I do have some FSR enabled, but I didn't need to go to FSR performance. We're actually at FSR balance, so 1080p, low settings, and we're getting an average of around 83 FPS with this game. I'm not exactly sure what the developers did or AMD with the drivers, but this is really some of the best performance I've seen out of this game so far on an RDNA 3 based iGPU. And if you take a look at Afterburner in the top left hand corner, you'll see we're right there at 64, 65 watts, and our CPU temp has only hit a maximum of around 64 degrees Celsius. Next up, we've got Forza Horizon 5, 1080p, medium settings, and we could probably do 120 FPS continuously with this if we added some FSR or Fidelity cast. It's really up to you. Even taking this down to 900p, it still looks great at medium settings, but with it set up like this, we got an average of 114 FPS. Mortal Kombat 1 is pretty steady here, but I am at 1080p low with FSR set to balance. But either way you look at it, it's still pretty impressive for integrated graphics, and this isn't far off from the 7840U. Remember, we can run this at a much higher wattage, and we don't have to worry about battery because we're plugged into the wall. I haven't tested Project Cars 2 on this APU in a while, so I figured I'd go ahead and boot it up. Getting some pretty decent performance here, an average of 73 FPS with a medium low mix. And uh, yeah, this is still one of my favorite racing games, really just for the rally cross here. And it does run pretty good on this APU. Doom Eternal 1080p, medium settings with no resolution scale, got an average of 80 FPS. And taking it down to low, adding some resolution scale, you can actually bring this up to 120, have a pretty good time with it. It still looks good at low, but I wanted to set it up at medium. And the final one we're taking a look at here is Cyberpunk 2077, 1080p, FSR set to balance. We averaged 76 FPS and the CPU temp here is only 66 with this one. The highest that I've seen it go while gaming was 71 degrees Celsius and this thing isn't loud at all. We don't have a blower fan here sounding like a jet engine. It's that 80 millimeter kind of blowing directly down on that heat sink. So it is really quiet. One thing I always like to monitor while I'm running my test is total system power consumption from the wall. Some people might be interested in this, given where they live in the world. Energy costs are higher in some places. And at idle, this is only pulling 18 watts. 
Average gaming jumps up to 78, and the maximum that I could get this to pull while maxing out the CPU and iGPU to 100% was 92 watts, so it is getting on up there. But that's more of an extreme use case scenario. Under everyday normal use and gaming, you're not going to see that kind of wattage. And remember, this does come with a 100 watt PSU. So overall, I think the God 77 is a great performing mini gaming PC, and we can actually get more out of it. You saw the temps there, we're only at a 65 watt TDP. The 7840HS can do up to around 85. I've been able to take it a bit higher, but it doesn't help out much. So if you're interested in seeing a video with this thing just totally maxed out, let me know in the comments below. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. If you're interested in learning a little more about this PC, I'll leave some links in the description. And let me know what you think about the design here. I know some people aren't into RGB, but if you are, this might be a cool little mini PC. I kind of do like it just because it's a bit different from everything else that we've seen. Now we've got that same basic shape, but having that controllable RGB on top is pretty cool. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.